Hello, we're in beautiful, and I mean beautiful, Avalon Bay in Santa Catalina. But we're gonna talk about something not so nice, and that's boat odor. And if you've ever had a boat, you've experienced boat odor in the cabin. I wanna share with you five steps that I took to eliminate boat odor in our boat. And let me give you a little history on our boat. So we bought our boat about 21 years ago, and it was uh, 10 years old at the time that we bought it. And it was an old charter boat that had not been taken care of and had been sitting just in a slip for years and not been used. The bilge was full of who knows what, oil, water. There was mold and mildew throughout the boat. The cushions stunk to high heaven. So just generally the boat was in horrible shape. So the five steps that I took, and I'm gonna go into detail on all these steps later, but the first one is to eliminate the moisture in the boat. So obviously you wanna to try to get the bilge as dry as possible. And we have a dripless uh, propeller shaft system. So we don't have water inside the boat. But also there's different ways that you can try to collect the water that's in the boat, not just from the bilge, but from moisture that naturally gets in the boat. The other thing that's important, the second thing is ventilation. And we use solar vents that operate 24 hours a day they operate on the sun, and then when there's no sun, they operate on batteries. One's an intake and one's an exhaust. And ventilation's important to avoid mold and mildew, and I'll go into more detail on that. The third thing that has its own category is the head. And if you've had a boat and you've flushed a head, you know how bad that can smell, that incredible sulfur smell. And that's coming from the seawater that most heads use to flush the head. We work through that and I'll share that with you. Cleaning every surface in the boat is incredibly important too because if the boat has smelled bad, everything in the boat is gonna absorb that smell and you need to wipe down and clean every surface. And for us, we tried to clean the cushions. I took those and had those steam cleaned because they smelled so bad. And when I went and picked them up in the van and brought them home, I knew that that was a failure because it stunk to high heaven. So we replaced the foam and the fabric of all the cushions inside the boat, and that made a big difference. And the last thing is just adding some kind of scent, which is easy and not something that's overwhelming. But it really worked for us, and I want to share our experience with you, and hopefully that will help you eliminate bad boat odor in your boat. So uh, let's get into the details. All right, number one, eliminate as much moisture in the boat as you can. As I mentioned, when we first got the boat, the bilge was full of black water, and we had a stuffing box, and with a stuffing box, you're always gonna have some water coming in because it can't be too tight to prevent the propeller shaft from turning, but you don't want too much water coming in either. So eventually, I, the stuffing box just had to go. So I got a PYI, PSS, dripless water shaft seal and that eliminates any water coming in with the turning of the propeller shaft and that way I have a completely dry bilge all the time. If you can't put one of those in or don't want to put one of those PYI shafts or there's other manufacturers as well then you need to make sure that you after you operate the boat that you keep that bilge dry because if you don't you're really not gonna be able to get rid of the mold and mildew and all the smells associated with that because you basically got a stagnant river at the bottom of the inside of your boat. Additionally, there's gonna be water just naturally in the air that's gonna be inside your boat. So we use a couple of different things. One is a damp rid bucket and you just put the crystals in the bucket and it collects water. The other thing is a hanging damp rid and it has the crystals in the top half of it it collects the water and the water collects down in the bottom of it both of those things are really effective and you'd be surprised how much water it ends up collecting inside your boat 
This is the bucket with the crystals that collects the water. This brand is Starbright No Damp, but I've used different brands. And then I get uh, refills for the crystals. The ones I have in there right now are Damp Rid. And I get these at a uh, hardware store. They sell it at Lowe's, Home Depot. You can get it at West Marine and pay a lot more money for it. But it collects a surprising amount of water and you just take this top off and you can see the water down in there that it's collected and you just have to empty that every month or so the other one that i use to collect moisture using the crystals is this damp rid and i hang it above the head and it collects a surprising amount of water i've got one right here that was up for a month and you can see how much water is in there the crystals that are in the upper part of it are all gone now and then once that happens the crystals are gone then you need to replace it i'll cut this open and measure it and tell you how much water it collected in a month you can see the little small crystals up on the top and then it collects the water in the bottom there's already a little bit of water in this one this is a lot of water to collect inside the boat in a month. And if you didn't collect this, it would be absorbed into the wood, into your cushions, somewhere in the boat. So we're just trying to collect as much water as we can to eliminate as much moisture as we can so we get the humidity down and we decrease mold and mildew and the smells associated with that. And one thing you can do is get a hygrometer to measure the amount of humidity in the air. And I have one here by AccuRite. I paid, I think, around $11 at Lowe's for it. You can get, a, there's a lot of different manufacturers and they're relatively inexpensive. From all the information I've seen, they say under 50% relative humidity is what you should be looking for inside to have a good environment that does not promote mold and mildew. Number two, another critical step is circulation. So you want to create as good an airflow inside your boat as you can. We don't have any cowls on our boat. So we install two solar fans that run 24-7. They run off the sun during the day. And then at night, they run off a battery that's recharged during the day. So we put one right here on this hatch. This is a four inch fan and we put a three inch fan in the head. These were sold by Nicro Marinco and I don't think they make these exact same ones anymore. They have a variation of this and there's other manufacturers out there that make uh, 24 hour fans as well. I put these in when I first got the boat and they lasted about 15 years. And that's kind of the typical life of a solar panel is 15 or 20 years. So after 15 years, I replaced both the one here that you see here at the hatch and then also the one in the head. And I, I, they weren't still making the ones that I had. So I actually found them on eBay because I like the ones that I had. The ones they have now look a little bit different and it's kind of hard to get um, a stainless steel one that replaced my old stainless steel one on the hatch here so i ended up with a black plastic but um, it's the same nicro marinco that i originally had it's just not stainless steel on this hatch so they've worked really well uh, they do run 24 7 so they're running right now and they'll be running tonight on the battery another thing you can do for circulation and airflow inside the boat is a fan or a dehumidifier. I have operated a fan in the boat before, one of these low voltage fans. They sell them at West Marine. There are different manufacturers that sell them. Uh, but fire experts will say that the most catastrophic thing that happens to boats is fire. And I think that they would not recommend that you have something plugged in 24 7 into an outlet on your boat because wiring on a boat is not like a house and it's also exposed to a lot of corrosive elements that housing wiring is not exposed to 
So I have done it before, but I'm not currently doing it. Um, and that's a choice you can make in terms of whether or not you want to use one of these fans that really operate at a very low level and also have a little bit of warmth to them or even a dehumidifier is certainly going to take a lot of the humidity out of the air. But um, as I said, I don't think most experts on boat safety would recommend that. Number three, now we're going to talk about the head. <laughs> and man, can it be bad. When we first got the boat, it was our first boat. And uh, you'd flush the head after the boat had been sitting for a while and you got this horrible smell. And at first I thought it was waste, you know, the really bad smell. It smelled like sulfur. But I later figured out that it was actually organisms, marine organisms, in the hose. Most boats use salt water to flush the head. So you have a valve that draws water in from the ocean every time you flush the head. If you have a fresh water head, you're not going to have the same problem with the sulfur smell. But what you do is if you close that valve after you're done, or leave it open, there are organisms that remain inside that hose. And you don't flush the head for a month, two months, whatever. You use it again and you flush it and it just reeks to high heaven. There's an easy way to eliminate that. And what we do is use the head. When we're done using the head, and we close that valve. And then I dump fresh water in and cycle the fresh water through, clearing all the hoses that go out to the holding tank. So there's just water in those hoses. And I've drawn all the seawater out of the intake hose so there's nothing in there really to die. And that makes a huge difference. So, you know, most people aren't using their boat every day and you use it and then maybe you use it a few weeks later or maybe even months later. And if you've not done this, it's going to smell pretty bad. And you're going to have a smell inside the boat as well. So by drawing all that water, all that seawater out of the hose and running enough fresh water in that any waste that's in the hose between the head and the holding tank is all flushed through with fresh water, it'll make a huge difference in the way the boat smells. Now I also use and have used various things as an additive to the head for the holding tank. Over the years I've used all kinds of different types of treatments and I don't really have one particular one that I recommend. Uh, they claim to eat up odor and I just don't use anything that has formaldehyde in it and the stuff that I'm currently using is that Ford bio RV holding tank treatment but I mean there's a, a ton of brands out there and I haven't really noticed a big difference with any of them frankly uh, but doing what I'm suggesting at least for us you can come in this boat, you can stand over this head right now and you can't smell it. And that was not the case before. The through hole for the seawater intake for the head is back here in the aft compartment under these cushions. And I have it closed right now. I keep my through holes closed when I'm not operating the boat. And I've already run all the seawater out of the hose by flushing it with fresh water. But uh, I'll go ahead and show you where the valve is. You can really access it from either one of these compartments. Uh, the valve is in the closed position right now, and if you move it up and it's parallel with the valve, then it's open. So that's open. It allows seawater in to flush the head, and then this is closed. Now I've already closed the valve earlier and ran clean fresh water through to get the draw the seawater out of the intake line and then flush anything out, any waste out of the lines that go to the holding tank. But I'll just demonstrate what I would normally do is close the intake valve as we just did and then put fresh water in the head and 
and I would run a few of these through because you want to make sure that you've drawn all the seawater out of the intake hose and you want to make sure that you've pushed all the waste out of the line, the hose that goes from the head to the holding tank. You don't want any waste left in those hoses. So run some fresh water through and I think if <laughs> you'll see a huge difference. You won't get that sulfur smell the next time that you use the head and your boat will smell so much better. I'm standing here right over the head right now and I can't smell it. So uh, in combination of the other things I discussed, I think that'll make a, hopefully that'll make a big difference because the head can be a major source of bad smell for your boat. I don't worry about getting all the seawater out of the intake hose every time every day or every time that you use the head. But uh, after we've made a trip, then I make sure that I get all that seawater out of the intake hose. And it's always good after every time you use the head to flush enough water through that you get the waste from the head through the hoses to the holding tank and you don't have a bunch of waste sitting in those hoses because that's gonna cause some smells as well. So, uh, Let's move on to the next step. You've done everything you can to decrease the moisture in the boat. You've done everything you can to increase the airflow inside the boat and decrease humidity. You've got the head cleaned up, eliminated that smell. So the next thing really is to clean the boat really good. If the boat has smelled bad for any period of time, then everything in the boat has absorbed that smell. All the cushions, all the woodwork, plastic, fiberglass, you need to wipe down and clean everything. And I did that with all my woodwork and I did that with the whole interior of the boat, particularly in the head when I cleaned everything in the head, you could just smell on the towel that you were using all the odor that you were collecting. So clean everything. And as I mentioned before, the cushions that were in the boat were the original cushions and they stunk so bad. I took them to have them steam cleaned and then when I picked them up I was driving back in the van and I'm like okay that didn't work I could still smell these cushions they smell horrible so I did have new cushions made and new fabric on um, everything in the boat and that's made a huge difference but you definitely have to do a thorough cleaning and try to do something about the cushions either be more successful in cleaning them than I was or replace them because if they smell bad your boat is going to continue to smell bad. Number five and the easiest step is just adding some sort of scent to the boat. I use these Glade Solid Hawaiian scent. I have one in the head and one here in the salon and you can do a plug-in if you have shore power and you're inclined to do that or whatever you want to add that gives a little bit of a scent to the boat. And uh, that's it. I mean, I hope this helps you. I mean, I'm obviously not an expert on boat smells, but when we first got this boat, it really stunk and my wife was not keen on it at all. So uh, I set out to do everything I could to improve the smell of the boat. I followed these five steps and it really worked for us. And uh, you know, it's nice when you come to the boat, maybe you bring friends down, you haven't been on the boat for a while and you come into the cabin and it smells nice versus smelling like something that you feel a little embarrassed about. So uh, I'm down on the boat a lot uh, and it's nice having a nice fresh smelling boat without mold and mildew. Now you may live in some place that is much more humid than we are here in California. So you might have to take these measures a little more to the extreme than I did but uh, I think they will help you. So, uh, and I certainly hope they do. So thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.